So now we want, to, <coughs> excuse me, we want to introduce a concept called a definite integral. And uh, the idea of this goes back to RAM. And we had said that when we want to get better estimates with RAM, we want to use more rectangles. And ideally, the number of rectangles should approach infinity so that our estimate approaches the exact area. Uh, that idea is what's called a definite integral. So it's the limit of the sums of the areas of the rectangles as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. And that's what all of this notation is actually saying. So we have n, oops, is the number of rectangles. And so this is saying that we're taking the limit as the number of rectangles is going to infinity. We then want to sum all of the rectangles, but what we're doing is the area. This is the height of the rectangle of one rectangle. And this is the width of that rectangle. And if that limit exists, we would say that the definite, we would say the definite integral exists or the function is integrable. Now this notation, uh, I'm going to introduce kind of how we can simplify this notation in a, a little bit here in this video, but we're going to save it for later in the course once you're more comfortable with definite integrals and to revisit the notation. Um, because this limit of a summation notation is really, really obnoxious, and we have an easier notation to work with while you get used to the idea of integrals, and we'll revisit this limit summation notation when we circle back to do uh, infinite series. So that whole notation, I have a limit as n goes to infinity of sum from 1 to n. In other words, I have at, uh, the number of rectangles is going to infinity, and I'm going to add up the areas, f of c sub i times delta x sub i, of each rectangle on this interval from a to b. We rewrite this using a tall skinny s that replaces all of this. So that limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from 1 to n gets replaced with a tall skinny s. The a to b part is saying what interval we are going on. The, where we start is at the bottom and is called the lower bound. Where we end is at the top and is called the upper bound. So a is the lower bound, b is the upper bound. And then we simplify how we say the area of that rectangle by saying, well, my height is just going to be written as the function. And delta x sub i, I rewrite as dx, which goes back to the Leibniz notation where this is representing an, a very tiny change in x because as we go to an infinite number of rectangles, the width of the rectangles is, get, is becoming very, very tiny, infinitesimally small. So we switch from a delta x to a dx to represent that. The way we read this is when we see that tall skinny s, we say the integral, then we say the bounds from the starting, saying from the lower to the upper, then we say what we're finding the integral of, in other words, what function, and then the dx is referred to as with respect to x. Uh, very similar to when we have dy dx and we say it's the derivative of y with respect to x. So that would be read as the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x. Now, to kind of give a preview of what we're going to revisit later in the course, what we have here is there's a more formal way of switching these notations between the limit summation notation and the integral sign notation. So I have the width of a rectangle is however big my area is divided by how many rectangles. So that's why we have the B minus A is the width of our region here. 
and then we want to divide by the number of rectangles. Then the x that's going to be used to figure out the height of the rectangle depends on which rectangle I'm finding. So I have a is my starting x value, but then I have to add on delta x, the b minus a times n, times some integer k, which represents which rectangle I'm looking at. If I'm looking at one rectangle over from A, I would have K be one. If it's two rectangles over, K is two. If it's three rectangles over, K is three. So K has to be, it's just a way of specifying which rectangle I'm looking at. I then take that X of K, plug it into my function to get the height. I then take the height times the width to get the area of one rectangle but then I need to sum up all of those rectangles where the summation sign comes in and then tell it to go off to an infinite number of rectangles. So if I were to look at the area of four minus X squared from zero to two, I have all these rectangles I could be drawing in here. And right there, I have six rectangles. It's going to give me an okay estimate, but if I want a better estimate, I need more rectangles. But the way I would do this is I would say, well, if I want to get this into my notation, I need the width of one rectangle, which is the B minus A. So B was two, A was zero. So two minus zero over N, which is the number of rectangles. So I have two over N is the width of each rectangle x of k, which I'm going to use to find the height, I have a plus delta x times k. Well, a is 0. Delta x I just found out is 2 over n. So 2k over n is my delta, is my x of sub k. I then want to plug that into my function, the 4 minus x squared. So I've got 4 minus the quantity of 2 over n k squared. That's the height of my rectangle. I then need to multiply that by my width, 2 over n, to get the area of one rectangle. Then I need to add up the areas of my, all my rectangles and have that go off to an infinite number. As you can see, saying the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared with respect to x is a much easier way of describing this. My next video, though, will kind of explain that we have to be a little careful because of the fact that I've been talking about this in terms of area, but a definite integral is not exactly the same as an area.